Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so we got another fun and amazing chapter of Black Clover out this week. But this chapter was very much a uh, let's take a break, let's take a breather chapter. Because if you think about it, we've been nonstop since we entered the Heart Kingdom. Actually, even before that, it's been pretty much nonstop with plot progression and like story development since we basically started a whole trial as to immediately after the demon was defeated. And because of that, we haven't really had a chance for any of the characters haven't really had a chance to take, like take a second to breathe and relax. So this is what basically Tabata was doing in the chapter, giving us a second to like kind of slow down the momentum, take things easy for a little bit, and then at the very end set up the next mystery or continue on explaining the mystery that he set up previously and that we're probably going to be spending the next little bit focusing on the story. And because of that, because he wanted to take a breather for this chapter, it's pretty much the shortest chapter we've ever had in the series. I mean, I think the chapter comes down to about 11, 12, maybe at the most 13 pages total. I'm pretty much not going to bother going over things chronologically. I'm just going to kind of talk about them as they pop up in my head. And to start things off, we might as well talk about the thing that probably threw everyone for a loop. And that's that bath scene where we get to see Mimosa, uh, the Princess of the Heart Kingdom, I still can't pronounce her name, and Noelle all bathing together. And yeah, yeah, we got, we got that scene. Now that scene was very interesting and I'm sure based off the way Tabata draws uh, like just regular concept art of no Noel and Mimosa that he's wanted to draw a scene for them like that for a long time and I'm sure yeah they had the Hot Springs like uh, episode or chapter back uh, right before the Royal Nice exam but that was nowhere near the level of what this was but anyway this part of the chapter served more purpose than just becoming the new screensaver for my phone Basically, this chapter, or this part of the chapter, and actually a part earlier than that, when uh, the princess was talking to everyone about the good work they've been doing by saving that town in the Spade Kingdom and kind of putting their foot in the Spade Kingdom by, gave, by giving them territory to kind of control. This part and that part kind of just, in my opinion, served to kind of foreshadow the idea that the princess might actually end up dying. I mean, literally all the signs are there. Literally every sign that she's going to die is pretty much on display in a chapter It's like for every scene we get with a princess in this chapter it's just like one giant red flag and that she's most likely going to end up dying i mean i haven't seen this many red flags to a character's death since asuma back in naruto and it's kind of sad because you know the princess the princess is actually a likable character so and i'm pretty sure we're going to get to see more and more of her as the arc goes on so by the time she actually does end up dying because of the curse we're all going to actually be heartbroken over her death Probably even more than we were over Julius's death, or so-called death, during the cha during the chapter when he died fighting off against Patry. And if I'm right about Mikiko being the Kaguya of the series, where he's going to actually be end up being the final villain, then I doubt that a half a year's time is enough time for them to actually find him and actually defeat him in order to save the princess. Now, maybe they'll find some kind of way to like keep her alive long enough to stop Mega Cool, like put her in some kind of stasis so that she won't be affected by the curse until after they bring her out. But I doubt that they have enough time, unless Mega Cool is not the final villain, I doubt they have enough time to actually stop him in order to save her life. Now, one thing I'm actually kind of wondering now that I'm on this thought process, have they tried using Asta's newest sword to dispel the curse? Because I mean, I'm sure there's no reason to think that it could work. But at the same time, his his uh, new sword does kind of dispel magical effects. And I would assume curses are just a form of magic. So it's, there is a strong possibility, or at least a slight possibility, that it could work in, save, or in dispelling the curse, or at least slowing it down enough, so that they can extend the period of time they have to find Mega Cool and defeat him. Now, that being said, I'm sure in a half year's time, they probably had this thought process at some point. But if they haven't, it's something worth trying. There's a lot of comedy in this chapter, which basically just comes down to Asta, Leo, and Luck all wanting to fight Gaja. Finral kind of fighting the urges to be the perv that he's always been. And Noel just kind of looking at them like, you guys are fucking idiots. That's, that's pretty much most of the comedy in this chapter. But I gotta say the funniest scene is seeing Charmy just like in the middle of the forest because all right, you get this moment where like I'm assuming this kind of like maid person comes running into the courtroom when they're all having their meeting. And she says... Uh, Miss Charmy has, you know, fled into the forest and has been hiding there for days now. So Asta hops on his sword and he flies over there. Which, by the way, we end up finding out that the reason why Asta can fly now is because just like how everyone else uses brooms and controls their magic to control the broom to fly, 
he does the same thing with anti-magic he controls the anti-magic in his sword so that he can ride it like a surfboard but anyway he goes over into the forest and he just finds charmy just like gorging herself on fruit and, and that was probably the funniest part in the chapter for me just because it's been a while since we actually seen charmy just like gorging on food the way she was in this chapter and i don't know i don't know what it is about charmy but i've always found her as like one of the funner characters in the series and now when asta finally finds her gorging herself on the fruit she basically tells him hey i do one or two things i'm either eating food or thinking about you know and that's really our transition into the serious part of the chapter which is literally the very end of it where we end up going over to the golden dawn headquarters we end up finding out that you know has been promoted to the rank of vice captain of the golden dawn and you know what i'm not even surprised that you know was promoted to that rank because of the fact that a the rank was vacant because we already knew that langros was going to get outed as the uh vice captain he was no longer going to hold that position and b by the end of the last arc you know and asta are both so strong that they should be at when it comes to power levels they do rank at least at a vice at a vice captain level but yeah it makes sense that out of everyone in the golden dawns you know would be the one to be promoted to that rank and now it makes me wonder if you know was promoted to the rank of vice captain who is now the captain of the golden dawns because we know it can't be william vengeance anymore he's been pretty much confirmed as a traitor i'm sure i'm sure you know uh julius was very lenient on his punishment but i doubt he was so lenient that that uh vengeance got to keep his position as a captain so it makes me wonder who would be placed in that position now who out who could possibly over you know in the golden dawns deserve that position more and i honestly can't think of a single person I, i'm interested in seeing who they reveal to be the new captain but that's not really important part of the chapter what we end up finding out during this part of the chapter when we cut over to you know is that basically the person who's there the like random uh golden dawn knight who comes to talk to him basically just gives him the message that sister lily from hage village is trying to get in contact with him and that's where chapter ends so basically it's setting up to go back to that mystery we had back in chapter 229 or 230 i think whatever chapter at the very end of chapter where we saw that guy go to hage village who was very tattered and beat up passed out in front of the orphanage and asked for master yuno so basically i think one or two things are going to end up happening as a result of this mystery or the result of this ending either a this is going to be the next thing that the body focuses on. We're going to take a break from Asta and all of them, and we're going to put some time and effort into discovering this mystery of Yuno's backstory, or at least his connection to his character. Or B, the bot is planning on sprinkling this here and there. Basically, what I mean by that is, like, we'll get little hints of it at the very end of some chapters. Like, maybe every 10 or so chapters, we'll give a hint of what's going on with Yuno and this guy's and his connection to this guy. But for the most part, we're going to be focusing on Asta and their journey over in the Heart Kingdom and Spade Kingdom and possibly even the Diamond Kingdom. So basically what I mean is that after every few chapters, at the very end, we will get like one or two pages devoted to this mystery. Go a few more chapters before, without talking about it, get some more information, and just keep on that, uh, just keep on that kind of development until we finally get the big reveal of their connection. And then we will go full circle and focus on that connection or that storyline and you know what i just noticed and this is really this really is not important at all but i and i'm gonna have to go back and confirm this by reading the chapter but i think when you know was walking into golden dawn headquarters we didn't see bell with him now i'm sure it has no implication i'm sure she probably was there and i'm misremembering or you know Tobias just didn't bother drawing her in this part of the chapter i'm sure he didn't lose bell or anything like that but it was interesting to note or at least something that popped up in my head that i don't remember seeing her with him at the end of the chapter but anyway guys it's literally it for the video there's nothing else to talk about from the chapter uh like i said it was a very short chapter so it's gonna be a very short video thanks for watching hope you enjoyed if you did drop me a like subscribe to the channel i would greatly appreciate it comment down below your thoughts and theories and i'll catch you guys next week peace